Hey everybody, I'm Mike Steele with Barbecue Champs Academy. It is so great to be with you this lovely Tuesday day here in Shreveport, Louisiana. I hope that we're going to have quite a few folks on here. I know we're on here a little early. Normally we do these at uh, 7 o'clock Central Time, but my daughter got engaged uh, this past weekend on her birthday. And we was not able to be with her on Sunday, so uh, I have to take care of my family as well. And we are supposed to go out to dinner tonight at 6.30, and unfortunately it was going to interfere with our podcast. And I was like, well, I didn't get a chance to do it last week for the simple fact because the presidential election was going on. But I'd be dadgum if I was going to miss it two weeks in a row. So we had to move it up a little bit. Good thing is you can go back and, and always watch this. So uh, if you are uh, with us uh, this evening, uh, please let us know. Uh, comment. Let us know you're here. We're going to have a great guest uh, with us. We've got Mr. Uh, Kevin Sandridge with the Barbecue Beat Podcast, and he was a big inspiration to me uh, starting up our podcast here for a Barbecue Champs Academy. And uh, he is going to be able to share a lot of information uh, or share a lot of information with us, uh, not only uh, just for what he does in the barbecue uh, podcasting world, but he's also a master judge, and I think he said in KCBS and maybe FBA down in Florida as well. So we're going to pick his mind a little bit about um, uh, some of the things that may be going on in judging and uh, share some things that we could uh, perhaps uh, pick up some pointers from. So uh, if you are on here, uh, give us a shout out, give us a comment, let us know. And if you have a question for Kevin, uh, certainly uh, let us know. And there's Miss Vanessa. How are you doing? It's so good to have you on here. I was hoping we was going to still be able to get a few folks here. So without further ado, I want to get into our partners. We certainly do want to thank all of our partners that make this possible. Uh, our good friend Danny Helms at Be Extreme uh, Barbecue, uh, Jason at Papa Joe's Grilling Supplies. Thank you guys so much for all the stuff that you do uh, for us as far as supplying a lot of our uh, people out there with uh, rubs and sauces and things like that they need. I know you're a big influence for us in our SEA competition classes that we have on Barbecue Champs Academy. So we certainly do want to thank uh, Papa Joe Grilling uh, Supplies. Also, BNB Charcoal, Mr. Ed Riley. I got a chance to visit with him extensively at the IBCA uh, banquet here a couple weeks ago. Uh, my good friend Brian Crawford at Lone Star Barbecue Pro Shop and his uh, Crawford's Barbecue Pit products that he has. Brian really stepped up the game and just carries about 95% of all the rubs and sauces that we use in uh, our classes. So we're trying to have that one-stop shop for all. Mr. Craig Cherry, Texas Pepper Jelly. Thank him uh, for all the support that he helps us in his class that he put out. Uh, David uh, over at um, Gunnar Wilhelm. Uh, so uh, thankful for him. I had a long conversation with David today. We got some special stuff that we're going to be rolling out. Uh, we're trying to work it in with the Gunnar Wilhelm knives. And uh, we are very, very excited about that. I I'm going to actually do a video on these knives. I got an opportunity to trim up some briskets the other day for a friend of mine. And we trimmed up four briskets and trimmed them down. Really got all the fat off of them never hit the knife with the raw a steel sharpening rod or anything and at the end of trimming four briskets i could still shave the hair off my arm they are absolutely amazing knives and then our good buddy kale at the barbecue news magazine i certainly do like uh, being associated with those guys that he's just a great guy we had him on about three weeks ago and if you haven't subscribed to the barbecue news magazine i would certainly suggest you click the link on barbecue champs and I go over there, go down to the bottom and click that link and head over there. And he's got a great magazine that he puts out. I see we got folks steadily coming on. Um, there is Miss Consistency herself, Marissa. Hey, girl, congratulations, man. You are still killing it. There's Mr. Sterling. We got James Dotson on here. We got Scott. Um, and we got folks steadily coming on. So, uh, yep, Matt Overson's class is amazing. Absolutely. I know. I know Sterling can attest to it. That is for absolute sure. But uh, without further ado, we do not want to uh, go uh, much longer without recognizing uh, our special guest, Mr. Kevin Sandridge. And we're fixing to bring him in right now. So let's get started. Hello, Mr. Kevin. How are you doing, sir? Hey, Mike. I'm doing great, man. Thanks so much for uh, having me on here. And, uh, you know, congratulations. You mentioned some nuptials in the family. That's pretty uh 
pretty awesome. The, the, the engagement and all the yeah. things happening there. And that's awesome. Yeah. Man. That Fantastic. was, they, they've been dating a long time and she's going through a, a nursing school. She's going to graduate next year. And I said, just get your grad, get your education, get that behind her. <laughs> that's right. And that's what she wants to do. She really yeah. does. And, and I had already had talked to Kevin, and, and then I had to call him up at ten o'clock last night. He's like, "Man, can we move this? Because I just found out we gotta we gotta go to a dinner party at six thirty. So, and I was not gonna miss this. So we got some folks steadily coming on, and um, we are certainly glad to have you. Uh, if you got any questions, there's Mr. John Lindsay. Hey, buddy, how are you doing? So, have you had John on your show yet? I think you did. Earlier we did one year. early on, and, and just I see, uh, you know, some some people that I'm. Uh, I have a pleasure of knowing. I mean, like I said, you got Sterling. What's yeah. up, man? It's, it's good to see you, John. Absolutely a pleasure all the time. Anytime I get to talk with those guys, yeah. it's a blessing. Sterling actually has family in the area. And Sterling, next time you're down this way, we'll have to get out there and hit that golf course. We weren't able to do it last time you were down this way. So hopefully we get that done. Yeah. Well, let's get started. Uh, I've got some questions for you. You know, we like to bring a lot of inf educational information to these shows. That's what our, that's what our company is about, education. Um, and I want to kind of get into asking you a few questions. So, um, yeah, This is awesome, being this, on this side of yeah, it. Yeah, you're great. on this side, you know, and, and, and it's kind of funny because, you know, you it's because of you, Kevin, why I started Barbecue Champs Academy Live. It really is. I saw how you was doing the show, what you was doing, and during all this mess with COVID, you know the we, we got such a tight-knit barbecue family mm -hmm. and it was just like gosh man I'm, i miss being able to talk to these guys so you know i saw what you was doing but i wanted to kind of get it more to the personal level of of all of our barbecue guys that we cook right. with all the time and uh, so since we're talking barbecue uh tell us a little bit about your background because we don't know a whole lot about you and your cooking we know that you interview us and man i'm telling you thank you so much for what you do for all the barbecue guys and steak grill masters across the globe uh, of giving them the spotlight to be able to talk about either their company, their rubs, their sauces, whatever. Uh, we thank you so much for that. So, but what about you? What do you do? Do you, do, are you, do you cook competitions? Are you a backyard cook? What, what have you got going on? I, uh, I, I'm a professional eater of barbecue. <laughs> uh, I, uh, I've judged a lot. I, if you take it back to maybe 2006 or so, I think is when I joined the KCBS. And, you know, anyone who knows KCBS and their history of contests in Florida, there are a couple really big ones. Um, you know, one of the big ones is coming up here at the first of the year in January, uh, the Lakeland Pig Fest. We've had a couple uh, kind of come and go in the past. There's also the Plant City Pig Jam that takes place in November uh, typically every year. And you know, those are the two big, big ones. And we've had a couple others kind of come and go, but I jumped in and decided I wanted to start judging barbecue because I saw it where else on the food network. Right. There I think it go. was actually in Texas. It was like a steak cook off. And I right. thought that's the job for me sitting <laughs> in one of those tents, eating that food. That's, that's, that's it. That's what I'm yeah. all about. And so I, um, I noticed there was a class uh, ahead of the Plant City Pig Jam, actually, and I took it in uh, October, and then the November was the contest, and I just kind of got hooked. Uh, I, I really have never been accused of being a shy person, so I, right. I sort of walked around after judging and just introduced myself to different people, and I think that was, that was back in the days where, like, the coolest thing with video was the flip cam. I don't know if anyone oh, yeah. listening ever had a flip cam, but those yep. things were, you know, oh, cool yeah, it's got a usb got. built in it was all yeah. hot and serious yeah <laughs> anyway uh so i remember um you know the, the bge pit crew dana and those guys down there this these guys were cooking i i, I knew barbecue bred some 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 in, and some crazy folks in all the best kinds of ways when you see a team rolling up with like five or six big green eggs transporting a kamado smoker to comps <laughs> is not really the most um soothing experience i would be very nervous personally you know because right, those things right. tend to kind of want to crack but yeah they do it man and and they still get out and cook and anyway just introducing myself and and um if i can say this real quick one of the things i wish more judges would do um is go talk to teams right, it, right. i can't tell you how many times i see 90 percent of a, a 
a group of judges head right to the car after they sort of packed up their cooler with whatever they can, you know, take uh-huh. with them uh-huh. and they're done. And they, they, really? in my opinion, they miss out on the best part of a barbecue competition. Wow. And, uh, and that's, if, if any of you folks out there are judges uh, or know people and you've never really mentioned that to them, I think sometimes judges feel like teams don't want to talk with them or they're not approachable. And uh, I and you and everybody else listening to this interview right now or, or who will listen to it later can attest to the fact that it's the exact opposite. That's Very right. few exceptions. Do you right. ever get someone standoffish or not wanting to sort of say, hey, how you doing? Um, I don't know. That John Lindsay guy, sometimes he's a little quiet. <laughs> it's hard to get him to talk. Yeah, that ain't. But, that, uh, yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but, yeah, I just I started judging. And a couple of years after that, I thought, well, man, I really want to sort of get going with, I don't know, I, as a hobby, I, you know, I've always enjoyed sort of writing and, and providing my sort of take on things. And I started a website and um, it was a blog really. And just, you know, offering up my experiences as a judge and different things that I would come across, but I wanted to get to know teams more. And uh, I basically, yes, sir, Justin comfort farms, looking forward to maybe seeing you guys up there. Not maybe definitely seeing you in, in January at the Boucherie event there at the comfort farms in Milledgeville, Georgia. Um, I reached out on Facebook just to see uh, ahead of a, a KCBS event um, that's no longer. It was in Bartow, Florida. I think the Bartow Bluegrass and Barbecue Festival. And Chad Ward with Whiskey Bent Barbecue responded back to me and said, "Yeah, just kind of come hang out. We're just here." And at the time, they were in a backyard at the backyard division. And um, Long story short, they sort of showed me around what they did, and that, that was my very first uh, indoctrination to the world of Blues Hog barbecue sauces. I think the back then, it, teams were real heavy on using that in pretty much everything along, maybe like the regular with the Tennessee red kind of blended together for a little yeah. something, something, and uh, still a favorite of mine, yeah. by the way, right. uh, combination-wise. But they kind of got me into the mix and I'll always be appreciative to Chad and, and Jared and, and the rest of the guys there uh, for letting me do that. And uh, it just sort of took shape from there. My, my, you know, my interest and everything moving forward and learning more about what was going on. And one of the things that was cool about that event is that they were short. Everyone who's ever cooked or judged a barbecue competition understands that, you know, Many, if not all of these competitions are qualifiers for some larger event, whether it's the American Royal, the Jack, mm-hmm. what have you. Um, they were a team or two short. And uh, that was cool to see that Chad and those guys with Whiskey Bent jumped out of the, the backyard division into the pro side to be a, to help them qualify. And they ultimately, I think they actually ended up finishing uh, – fifth overall on the pro side so you know that was kind of cool to see of course that was you know rub bagby with swamp boys barbecue down here was on the scene and uh you know he uh he took i think he that was his second year back to back winning first place at that event but uh that's no shocker we've got quite the uh competition crew down here in imperial Polk county so right right Wow. So, uh, so you, your passion was, you love barbecue. You got into doing a judge. Now, I think you told me you're a master judge. Is that correct? Yes, sir. For, um, the, uh, Florida barbecue association, as well as the, the KCBS, uh, Kansas city barbecue society. And that's a trick when you live in Florida, because you, you have to leave the state a lot right. <laughs> to get yeah. the numbers up to get to your master judge for KCBS, which was really great actually, because that, that let me meet a lot more people. Right. And really sort of spread my network of, you know, really amazing folks in barbecue and get to know people. Um, you know, uh, my dad at the time was living in Salisbury, North Carolina. So the the Tilly Harley Davidson Biker Blues and Barbecue event in Salisbury uh, was a favorite stop for me. And I remember the first year I went up to that event, a couple things. One, I thought for sure I was going to get some some Carolina style barbecue in my judge's box. Right. right but it was going right. to hit the table and no, no, it, no, it did not. I mean, and that's when I started to realize that, you know, the, the, their KCBS and FBA, these organizations have done an amazing job at pushing the culture of barbecue. And I think they should all be commended for that. One of the things you do come across is a little bit of the um, homogenization 
of barbecue to an extent, right? right. I mean, you're going to get a more or less a Kansas City style sauce profile that tomato is right. going to play a, a right. strong role. Um, but there are nuanced differences, uh, though, if you ask guys like, you know, the goat, Darren with uh, Iowa Smoky D's, Darren Worth, he will tell you that it's a tenderness contest first and uh, your flavor profile just needs to be such that it doesn't offend anybody and everything right. sort of is even. Right. Um, now, you do a lot with, uh, you know, IBCA, right. um, which I have never judged or really sort of been a part of. And that's that's the one organization that uh, I would like to be involved with at some point. Just do like a judging or just cook with a team or do something. So maybe we'll be able to arrange that when yeah. uh, we get a little more footloose and, and fancy free. But but yeah, man, um, you know, just uh, getting that eye opening experience. That, OK, the styles are sort of the same. You know, Florida, North Carolina, you know, I've judged it at Frisco in Colorado a couple times with my brother. Um, you know, he's my older brother, but he copycatted me. Uh, right. I, I was the first. I wanted everyone to know I was the first barbecue judge that had the Sandridge last name in our family. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, but eventually my brother started doing it. Uh, my dad and his wife started. And at one point, you know, we'd have the whole my brother's wife jumped in. We had like the whole clan together, like the whole Sandridge family. And right. uh, it was it was a really fun time. Um, but but again, you know, um, and you're seeing people all over the country cooking KCBS contests, you know, with flavor profiles that were um you know, similar, but had, had some subtle differences was, you know, that, that just made me appreciate the winners even more because right. I mean, th that, that line between, you know, what's going to hit and what's not and what's changing and the undercurrents of what judges are going to want to see from region to region. I, I will say that I suspect that there, there is a little bit of uh, tweaking going on to an extent, you know, maybe a little extra sugar here or a little more back heat there depending on where you are maybe in the region. But but I have good friends of mine that swear that they cook the same profile wherever they go, wherever they go. and that's what they rock, and that's what they do. Yeah. So, yeah. so why don't you enlighten us a little bit, Mr. Kevin? Uh, give us some insider tips. So what, uh, what are you looking for as a master judge? Now I'm going to reach out to you and help, have you help the barbecue guys. Number one, what are you looking for when you're judging barbecue? Well, first and foremost, I want everyone to know that, um, especially down here in Florida, but folks I've talked to on the KCBS side as well, we're really pushing this idea that everyone needs to start with whatever your top score is. Like in the, as a judge in, in my book, whether it's a nine in KCBS or a 10 in, in FBA, that's where you are at the beginning. And I don't know if that comes from my background as a teacher, just wanting people to do well. But, you know, you're kind of rooting for them, right? And then the box gets opened, and then you go from there. Um, for me, presentation-wise, it doesn't have to be anything that looks like an origami project. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, I just want a nice, neat-looking box. Um, if you're talking about maybe, you know, anything that's got a, a lot of surface area, so like chicken thighs or ribs, it's nice if if – if maybe you can limit the brush strokes, you know, that you sometimes brush marks that you see in there. But that being said, if, if I see brush marks on every piece and it looks uniform, I mean, I'm not going to be that guy that's, Oh, Oh, well, you know, and uh, a lot of teams get real nervous about sauce on the underside lid of a box. We are told as judges to ignore that because these boxes are going through different sets of hands, right? Right, Somebody and uh, could push down. On yeah, oh, come on! Or a box right. gets set on top of another box, or, right. or what have you. Again, you know, if I ever, you know, if and when, like I, I don't table captain typically for KCBS events, but if I table captain for an FBA event, I'm gonna explain that. Look, we need to make sure that we're we're always edging on the side of the team, right? Um, you know, and, and you let people know that uh, you know this or that thing, like like chicken, like the 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 everyone's experience as a judge at some point if they judge enough a chicken thigh might have one of those tiny little feather pin bones you know what i'm talking about or a uh -huh. chicken wing might have them in there no that's not a foreign object that's actually part of the animal so let right. it go 
<laughs> right? And just, right. again, don't get too hung up on things that are going to hurt a team because no no team goes into these ev- events with, with anything but their best intentions. So right. nice, even presentation. Um, you know, it's tricky in Florida because they don't allow any greens in the box. Right. Right. So you get some heavy boxes, man. Like yeah. pork boxes yeah. get heavy because yeah. everyone's got the bed of pork, the shredded right. pork, right, right, or pulled. Right. And then you're building on top of that. And the expectations are a little different. It used to be, man, it used to be in Florida where if you didn't show at least three different muscle groups or portions of a pork butt or at least what a judge might think, because you know, sometimes you can take a money muscle and just sort of like – chunk it up a little bit maybe if right. it was a little over or it didn't slice quite right but you know if you didn't show multiple sort of groupings like that the judge might think that you know well w- what didn't turn out right and that's changed a lot thankfully now it's starting to trend a little bit more like KCBS, where you can show your sort of precious little Medallions. jewel pieces yeah right. like in the middle of the box and have them set nicely and um uh, and that's great because uh, you know again we always you can't tell cook teams only put what's amazing in the box right. and then ding them for putting some for not putting something not in putting the box that wasn't box. amazing right. right yeah exactly yeah. so um tenderness is is the the trick i think if you can get tenderness down on a regular consistent basis you're ahead of the game um you know i again i'd steer clear of anything that's going to uh either stand out sharply or linger too far on the palate. Um, and sometimes I don't think new cook teams understand the power and, and the punch, surprisingly so, that something as simple as black pepper can bring, right? Because that's, uh, that's one of those things that I think you don't think of as being a hot spice, but a little black pepper can get you yeah. if you're not careful yeah. uh, sometimes. So, um, but yeah, just and you know, I've, I've I've had the experience where you you get maybe into that second of maybe five or six entries of chicken, and and you get blown out with heat, and 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 not only does it sort of perturb you as a judge, you're like, man, I I didn't really sign up to have a, to need a, a whole inner mouth transplant right. after this, you know, contest right. is over. But the second part of it is the next team's box that you go to judge. I mean, you're handicapped as a judge because you're still burning up from the last entry. The last so, yeah. you know, it's just, and again, it, it, it's just certain things, just a nice, even flavor profile. Um, now, one thing I've not done is I've not, I've not judged any SCA events. So um, I, I would rely on guys like, you know, you know, the guys from, you know, be extreme, John, so on and so forth to help us more on that front. But from a, from a standard barbecue proteins, you know, chicken, pork, brisket, ribs, um, those would be my suggestions. And on, I guess, brisket, um, one of the things that I'm seeing less and less of in boxes are burnt ends. Um, I think they're the, they can they can do you a great service if they're really good. Um, they can hurt you if they're not. Um, the question is, I, I think, especially down here in Florida, yeah, you know, I think that, that there's not a, a strong consensus among judges as to what a good burn in is. You know right. what I mean? Like right. some people really like that sort of rendered fattiness of a burn end. It's mm-hmm. not gelatinous. It, it right. You can tell it's there, but it instantly dissolves and it's really right. tasty while other people might think, Oh, uh, you know, like you just, you can't account yeah. for that. So I think at least down here anyway, teams are starting to just leave it out because right. they don't, they don't know. And, and that's a shame because, you know, I've, I've had the, the good fortune of cooking behind the scenes with, I mean, when, let me rephrase that. I've had the good fortune, good fortune to clean a lot of the dishes of some really good teams. <laughs> yeah. Mean, yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, guys like Matt Barber, for instance, with hot Wachulas, Matt is capable of crafting burnt ends that literally will just melt in your mouth. Amazing. They're just so good. But, ah, you know, like who's going to hit 
whose table are they going to hit? You right. can kind of control the consistency, pull, and texture of a slice more than you can a burn in. So right. I don't know if anyone else is seeing this. Uh, any other competitors out there are seeing the same thing that I'm starting to notice, but that's one of the sort of differences I'm trying to pick up on. Right. Wow, that's some good feedback. That's some really good feedback. Have you seen flavor profiles change over the last few years? I'd say ribs are a little less uh, candy bar-ish than maybe they were back when I started. Um, you know, I had never really, I've always sort of just had, you know, ribs that were just minimally seasoned growing up that were just kind of like off of a grill like mm -hmm. direct fire mm -hmm. or just, you know, maybe, maybe wrapped to an extent. But when I had my first sort of competition rib back like in 2005, oh my gosh. I mean, it was like the closest thing to a meat snicker bar you could ever right. get your mouth around. I mean, there was like a cinnamon component to that pork. There was wow. a little bit of a lot of sweetness, sort of like a darker brown sugar kind of sweetness to it. And, but, but after a while, I think, judges started to kind of miss the flavor of pork a little bit. Right, right. And so I, I, I think now maybe um, letting the starting off with good quality meat, you know, whatever your budget can sort of afford, um, or, you know, and then letting the meat speak for itself is a little bit more of a way to go. Right. Okay. That's some good tips. I mean, and there's a lot of people, I mean, you know, KCBS is, is tough, you know, and, from, so for what I'm gathering, what you're saying, whether you're in Florida, whether you're in the Carolinas, keep the barbecue the same, cook it the same. So wherever that flavor profile, once you get it, just be down the middle of the road. You're saying you don't want something so hot that it offends you, and it, it obviously it's going to affect the next box coming in. Now, with that said, you said, you know, you, you take a bite, it's pretty spicy, and now you got to go to the next box. Do you try to clear out your flavor, your palate? Do you wait just a few minutes to give that next guy a little chance to, okay, I got to let my, my taste buds come yeah. back into play? No, absolutely. Like, so every, every contest um, typically is going to provide judges with water and some saltine crackers to kind of get you through those moments of just cleaning out your palate. Um, you know, there's a, <laughs> it's terrible. I shouldn't say stuff like this, but I'm going to say it anyway. There, in the backyard division, sometimes you can get a box or two that is um, maybe, you know, you know, folks are learning. And everybody starts at a different place. Right. Uh, you kind of meet them where they're at, but it was not the best thing you ever put in your mouth. Right. So that might be like a two or three cracker entry, you know, <laughs> to really kind of <laughs> right. get the Clear next. Out. Yeah. Give the next bunch of a, a fair a group a fair shot. But um, the. Uh, Sometimes it gets fancy though. Sometimes, man, I've been at events where they've had like you know the uh, you know the, the the white grapes on the table. You know, yeah. Um, yeah. Sometimes you sometimes hey now between categories you even get a little sorbet to to cleanse really? the palate. That's oh, wow. that's how you know we fancy when we're yeah. doing that. You know, that's that's something special. But uh, wow. but yeah, you definitely want to do as much as you can to let the next entry sit on site itself. Now. Now, FBA, by the way, you, you judge appearance, taste, and tenderness for one box, and then they put it away. You take your scores down, or you write your scores down, and then the next box, you go soup to nuts on that, too. Right. It's not like KCBS where you lay everything out on the grid pattern. Right. I, I, don't, I enjoy judging both. I do think laying everything out in front of you does tend to – I mean, we're humans, right? And you know when you see – I mean, it's like looking at, at people, people watching, like you, people look different and you notice certain, certain things about different people. It's hard to not be a little comparative right. when you're, but, but you tell yourself, no, nope, okay. You kind of kick yourself back into professional mode and, and try right. to give every entry it's due. But, but yeah, that, that would be a key difference between the two, uh, the two categories or two sanctioning bodies. Right. That, yeah, I don't know if anyone, or I, I didn't know if anyone uh, or everyone knew that. Now I would be remiss. I did mention, um, I, I know Sterling, at least he was on the show or in the audience earlier, but I do have to say, um, I would be remiss if I, uh, did, if I didn't say this, I have seen the Luton booty gold star chicken rub in, uh, 
many a competition barbecue trailer down here in Florida. Um, I will, I will leave it at that. I won't <laughs> pinpoint any names and try to betray any, you know, secrets, but uh, you're doing good work, Sterling and your products speak for themselves. So I just want to make sure I said that. Yeah. Yeah. He's got that chicken rub, man. That gold star chicken rub is absolutely phenomenal. So, all right. Well, that's some pretty good information. Uh, flavor profiles haven't changed. Stay consistent. Stay down the middle road. Cook the same barbecue everywhere you go. You're really looking. I yeah, like how you said you're looking for the uh, the presentation to be good, uniform. The brush strokes I thought was really informative of how you're talking about what you're looking for there. And, and there are I'll, tricks that guys use for that. I think like maybe sometimes they'll they'll warm up some uh, maybe apple juice concentrate or like you know some things to kind of even out those right. those Make marks you know towards Make the end but uh but but again you know i i i do want to say that I, I i do believe there might be a little tweaking from region to region but rub bagby with swamp boys told me this a long time ago he's like you can get to real trouble trying to chase flavors right um Just stick with what you know oh oh yeah well, you know, Lee Hickle's one of our IBCA cookers. It was cooker the year last year, and then this past year he run it up. And he is making a big push. He said, I want to go after KCBS now. I want to go do that. Nice. And he's done, man, in the last five weeks, he's done travel to like 7,000 miles. I mean, he went. He lives way down in South Texas by Corpus Christi. He Ooh. went up to a competition up in Missouri. Then he went all the way to Georgia. Then he went all the way to Florida. Then he went to Mississippi. And then he went up to Oklahoma. That's like his last four or five competitions. And at first, he was trying to play around with like different flavor profiles cooking in Missouri when he cooks in Texas or Florida. Mm -hmm. And he just he wasn't doing as good as what he normally did. And he went down to Florida and he said, I ran my same stuff that I cook in Texas. I cook my IBCA rib. He got a first place rib. Casey there you goes. go. Yeah. And, and he had like an eighth place brisket or something. And he said, you know, the heck with it. I'm just, I'm running what I run and that's it. And he went to the next competition. I think he had another top call. His, his pork has been consistently getting better. Chicken's been his, probably his hardest category he's had some trouble with is chicken. And, yeah. Uh, so I'm going to ask you about this because, yeah. you know, we've talked a little bit about here's a newcomer coming in and he's mm -hmm. cooking in the pro division. And, uh, you know, he's, he, he gets his thighs. They're good. But mm -hmm. what is your thought? I keep telling him, man. You know, go to legs. Look at Sterling. He cooks legs. Mark Lambert cooks legs. Give give the judge a handle. I mean, they get. I would imagine they probably get tired of seeing thighs come across. So let me ask you a question: If you see thigh, 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 and then you got a box of legs, does that excite you? Does that make you think, hmm, he don't know how to cook thighs? Which I know you're not. They're not supposed to. Uh, but it's kind of like what you said just a minute ago with the burn in. So. As a judge, would you like to have something a little different other than a dang thigh that everybody eats, like a nice handle? Yeah, meat. Look, meat on stick wins all day long, right? Amen. Um, that's it. That, that's a that's a great question. I I I like a, a good chicken leg in a box, um, and I think um, I think that there was a little while where I was seeing more and more of them. I haven't seen them as much lately um and and you mentioned chicken leg cookers uh you know heath riles heath riles can throw down some chicken legs i took a class with him over at whiskey bent uh, barbecue in lakeland years ago and those are some of the most delicious things i've ever eaten as a judge and if you do them right i mean you got a nice bite chunk right, right there you can kind of you know right you know win, you know, get a winning experience with um one of the things that um you know, I, I think is is important. Just make sure it's really good. I mean, if you're doing if you're doing legs, I mean, obviously it's sort of the same consideration you're gonna take with with thighs. You know, you want to make sure that skin is nice and bite through. Um, I know some guides, you know, take the 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 jacquard, you know, to it to kind of help with that. Sometimes just blow it out at a really high heat, hot and fast. Um, but uh, Judges will not, they're not supposed to judge based on their preference. They're not supposed to say, I don't like legs, so I'm dinging that guy, you know. Okay. Um, <clears throat> and it's the table captain's job to reiterate this. And I can see Josh uh, right. 
my buddy Josh down there, he's, you know, explaining that, you know, he's, and you'll see this. I mean, again, judges are human. Um, and there are cases where, you know, yeah, I'm, uh, again, you've asked me questions. I'm going to tell you what I see and what I've, I've seen. We um, want it. We want what I, I've seen, I've seen people, you know, after uh, you know, everybody turns their cards in and we're all sort of chatting about what we thought. Well, I didn't like X entry because I don't like barbecue sauce. What? Then why are you a judge? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Um, that would eat, infuriate you know, me. Or like Josh said, I don't, I didn't like the lollipop. Like, I don't, I don't know what, I don't want to touch actual bone with my fingers. I don't know what the people's problems are, but, uh, but you start to wonder that, um, he thrives. He thrives told me a story once at Memphis in May, he had a judge come in and, um, this gentleman sat down and, uh, they were, he was, he was tasting all the, the entries or, or, or actually tasting the pork that he was, it was at the, the face-to-face interview part of the Memphis and May pro- program, um, the original program. And that, but he wouldn't, he, he would only put the meat in his mouth and he would taste it and he'd take it out of his mouth and put it back on the table. Oh, God. Um, and, and the second time he did that, Heath, as only Heath can, is, is there something wrong? <laughs> you know? And uh, the guy tells him, oh, yeah, I'm a vegetarian. Oh, good God. I, I'm just here because I, I want to support the event. And it's like, what? Some, what? What are you doing? Oh, so so there's some wacko, kooky stories out there. But a leg should be able to score very well. Uh, wings and chicken boxes. I've seen those do very well. But again, just make sure they're really good. You know, right. I've seen I've seen seen entries that have uh, sort of sliced chicken breast in a box right. do well. But man, you know, we've all had dry chicken breasts, right? You know, right. you know, you know, ban- banquet chicken, you know, right. <laughs> and right. and it's, and and yeah. so you know that can hurt you. And and I I will say this, I'm an aggregate judger. You know what I mean? So right. if you put two or three different little treats in the box i'm gonna kind of assess them all and give you a, an averaged out sort of experiential score on that stuff so right. i mean you could have had amazing you know chicken thighs but you put wings in there too and they were not as a good right. so you know you know there you go uh it's one of those things where just make sure it's all very, you know, of, of the best quality. Uh, right. Justin, I got a car, a car that said, tasted too much <laughs> like pork on a pulled entry. That's People just kill me. You know, kill me. Yeah. You know I, I tell you what, I, I and Justin, I, I'm a cook as well, man. And if I were to see something like that, I'd want to go find that judge. <laughs> <laughs> we spend it. so much time and money going to a competition to cook amazing barbecue and for a judge to say tasted too much like pork on a pulled pork entry, then you don't need to be judging. Right. You know, I mean, these guys are bust and gals are busting their butts, spending probably at least a thousand dollars to go to one of these contests, and for mm-hmm. somebody to write some kind of chicken crap <laughs> comment like tasted too much like <laughs> pork on yeah. a pork well, what did you want it to taste yeah. like? You want it to taste like chicken? That's right. I mean, would that make you feel better? Maybe we need to run some brisket juice across it. Make it taste <laughs> like brisket. Yeah, I don't know, it's, man. Yeah, I, I know. I, I, well, I sometimes wonder about stuff like that. And, um, man, I don't know. If you fill the box, does it affect your decision? So that's um, another question. Now, now, that's one of the deals where um, in Florida, filling the box is kind of – well, let me – Let's let's. I want to put a, I want to put a pin in that question real quick because I I don't want to forget what I wanted to say. One more thing about chicken, especially okay. chicken thighs, but maybe legs too. There's okay. two two temperature ranges that teams tend to take their chicken to. Um, some some of them kind of ride the lightning and go to that like you know one fifty eight sixty maybe a little lower like the lowest possible safe range because it does lend to a nice juicy you know experience when you yeah. But then there's the 197 ish nine, nine yeah, yeah upper level range that's a different experience and um, it might be something for teams to try right you know right. It, 
I maybe, you know, after the third go around, if it's not hitting, maybe take it to that second level uh, and see if, if that's doing a little okay, better so, for you. So tell, tell me about that. I haven't heard that. So there's some people that actually are, are, are putting thighs in at 165 maybe. What do you – see, I, I noticed because I cook IBCA mm -hmm. and, you know, we take our stuff up higher because to me at, at 172, 175, it just tastes slimy. You take that thing on up, it doesn't. So what's well, your be, thoughts on that? Now, I I have to ask this question to, to be able to give you a good answer. Now, does the chicken for IBCA, that's going to – like when I get a – the entries I get as a judge for FB and KCBS, man, they are pretty hot and ready to go. Right. They haven't been sitting very long at all. But I know with IBCA, sometimes oh, they're gonna your meat can sit around a little bit. Yeah. And that's all. I talked with Aaron Leslie of um, a podcast interview years ago um, with uh, Texas Oil Dust. And, you know, he, as you know, cooks a lot down there. Uh -huh. I mean, he's from that area. So he said that you sort of sometimes have to overshoot. Right. Um, your, your, your tip for texture, maybe a little bit because it's going to tighten up on you. Maybe as it sits around, yep. you it wouldn't does. think that way on a KCBS cook, I don't think, right. or a FBA right. cook. Right. Um, but, but yeah, the, um, the second range, the higher range and, and I apologize for not having the exact temperature number, but it's, it's in it's the one nineties, you know, 90s. Yeah. yeah. Um, these guys are going for that second that. window. But I just heard recently that, well, looks like they're going, judges are wanting now, they want to go back down to the lower number. You know what I mean? Wow. And I, so again, it's always, it's yeah. always changing. So. But, but I didn't realize there were sort of two different possibles on the chicken until a few years back. But uh, that's interesting. Um, uh, Justin, so you guys do, so I guess GBA does what KCBS does. I, I like throwing out the lowest score. Yeah, I because think I think that tends to. Well, it evens out the field when you get that one. Yeah. That's Tod judge. Kelly. Yeah, is that my friend Kelly Curtis will say that? <laughs> butt scratching, booger eating judge. So <laughs> 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 that, that knows more about barbecue has probably never cooked barbecue than the guy that's cooking. So yeah, yeah. I uh, know a lot of judge FBA chicken that was too hot to touch. Oh yeah, but, you're you're doing so, this. You're, yeah, yeah, you're so I, hot. yeah. Josh, you know, you, yeah. yeah, exactly. Uh, um, well, all right, let's roll back then to our buddy Danny at B Extreme. If you feel if uh, if you fill the boxes, yeah. it affects your sense. Thank now, you. I will tell you this. <laughs> Excuse me. Robbie Royal, mm -hmm. when we did his class, Robbie turns in a freaking heavy box. I mean, he had 10 pounds of pork in that box. I was like, good gosh, man. He said, I, feel, I give him a heavy box. So, Yeah, Justin, I, I don't know for GBA – do they allow? Because I haven't judged that sanctioning body either. Is there are there greens in the box for GBA or is it just meat? Just meat. If, if it's just meat, then you kind of on a pork box. You got to fill it up. I'll tell you, as a as an FBA table captain, you will need to. You might want to consider a back brace. You yeah. Know, especially yeah, if you get those uh, round tables judges sitting at, and you've got to yeah. kind of duck in. Every other, oh man. So yeah, there you go. No garnish. So you're yeah. going to get heavy pork boxes for sure. Yeah. yeah. I know when Robbie did his and he built the GBA box for our class and uh, his box was heavy. It was a very, very heavy box. And like you said, no garnish. So, so hopefully that answers uh, Denny's uh, uh, question at B extreme. So um, yeah. And if anybody else has got any other questions for Kevin, while we're on the, the subject, let's, uh, this is this is a perfect opportunity, guys, for you, especially for those that are cooks and stuff like that, to to get some questions out of or get some answers from a, a judge, you know. And that's one thing, you know. You 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 said something just a minute ago that I found was really fascinating. Ninety percent of the judges, after they pack up their cooler and they're gone, and you don't go out and mix. And I remember Robbie Royal told me um, that. You know, when he first started, he he loved to get the feedback from the judges, you know, mm -hmm. and he said, don't be afraid. And here's your pro tip from Robbie Roy. Justin, uh, uh, Justin is taking his class. Robbie's class is great on barbecue champs. Thank you, Justin. I'm glad you enjoy it. Robbie, Robbie said, do not be afraid that after a competition's over to go to him and say, 
tell me where I'm missing. Let them try the food. They'll, they can try it and tell me what I'm doing wrong. And he said, a lot of times you'll find the judge that'll say, you didn't get this or this is too sweet or whatever the case may be. And he said, that's the best person that you could possibly get to help you. You know, mm -hmm. people ask me all the time, well, do you, how much, you, know, you practice all the time? Do you practice it? I don't ever practice at home. I mean, it does not matter what I think of the food. It right. matters what I turn into an IBCA judge who is the locals at that event mm -hmm. right off the street, no certified, nothing. Hey, you hey, come on over here. You talk about the hardest person to cook. That's for. let me tell you, I, mean, my hat, I, I don't know how y'all do it. That's a whole nother it's, it's, deal. You, you yeah. better, you better freaking, I tell people all the time, you better cook good barbecue and you better cook that good down the road, middle of the road barbecue. You don't want to offend nobody. It's got to be good. It's got to mm -hmm. pop. You got to have, you got to nail a lot of things. And when you get it right, it usually does pretty dead gum good for you consistently, no matter where you go. I can cook in Louisiana. I can cook in Texas. Um, so, it, you know, and, and do I change my flavor profile? Nope. I cook good backyard barbecue. Amazing backyard barbecue. Yeah, I was going to ask you, actually, do you find with IBCA, do you do you change anything from region to region, or do you nope. keep it the same? I cook it the same. Okay. I cook it the same. I, I've tried. I chased that around at one time. Oh, I'm going down to South Louisiana. They want it hot. Pfft, nothing, you know. And then finally I just said, you know, just cook your barbecue. You know, do I change now? Nah, maybe if you go a little bit far south, you might want to put just a touch more heat. Maybe not as much sweet if you're cooking up more north Texas. More sweet, not not no heat. So um, anyway, um, yeah, it's uh, it's just one of those deals, man. You just gotta you gotta find that middle of that road barbecue and just cook it consistently. I'm gonna make sure that Lee Hickel watches this class because I think from some of the things that you've said, I think Lee would get a lot to help a newcomer coming into KCBS of what the judges are looking for. Especially and, and look, take on a this chicken. man, like look, no, no one with a brain can ever say that, you know, Lee doesn't have the chops to, to win anywhere. Cause yeah. he's got, he's, he's got amazing. it. I like, no amazing. doubt, but, but it might be worth it to take a class from somebody who. Well, I got a whole bunch of pitmaster classes you know, on barbecue, and he and I'm he's just, talked he's talked yeah. to Robbie, you know, and and they have a lot of times our guys will, you know, if they're wanting to, you know, go into another organization. Mm -hmm. I think Robbie's been wanting to do some SCA, and he talked yep. to John Lindsay. I think they there swap classes. These guys will swap classes a little bit with each yeah. other just to help and, them out. Brent, Man. my buddy Brent Little, he, he was curious as to what class that I thought was like a, a really good class or one of my favorites. Uh, Robbie's class has got to be – because I'm fascinated about um, – I've never really been involved with uh, the GBA, um, that, that pork loin entry. Yeah. Cause, oh, yeah. See, when I think pork loin, I mean, right off the cuff, that's that's a pretty basic piece of meat. You know what I right. mean? So you got to – I would imagine – you need to sort of be able to do some things that are going to make that something mm -hmm. other than what it is on its surface when right. a judge is going to you know taste that. So that's sort of a class that, that I think is, is really good. Plus, um, that's something that a whole lot of people have experience with in the backyard and at home. So right. anytime you can get Robbie's input on, uh, on, on pork, that's never a bad thing. So yeah. no, Robbie is, uh, he's very, very good. All his classes were absolutely amazing. He was the second guy that we ever filmed. And, uh, man, I'll tell you what, that man lays it on the line. So I didn't know that there were, did you know there was a money muscle on a pork loin? <laughs> you know what? I don't think I did. Hmm. Yeah, uh, yeah. There you yeah. go. There you go, Robbie Roy. I'll show you where the money muscle is on a pork on a pork loin. <laughs> I was like, dude, what? So yeah, it's uh, it's quite amazing. Uh, yeah, but but, but your whole squad, man. I mean, everybody, the the men and women that are part of the Barbecue Champs Academy. It, you you guys have put together, I think, easily, hands down, the the preeminent cooking. And, and teaching experience um, that anyone could hope to be part of, not just with the professional level steak and barbecue classes, but man, if people haven't been jumping on those backyard classes, 
not only is it a deal, I mean, those right. things are priced to fly off the shelves. And with, with the holidays coming up, I mean, that's that's what people need to get involved in. And and again, hey, Dana, uh, you got some shout. I, I gave you guys some love. Uh, yeah, I don't know if you remember, better, Dana, yeah. but Dana, I was talking about that time when I put, showed up at the Plant City Pig, Pig Jam with my flip cam and uh, put that video on YouTube. I think that thing still may be floating out there somewhere. I don't know if it's still out there or not, but but, but the classes with Barbecue Champs Academy, I mean, look, I mean, did, you can't, you will not find better instruction and, mm -hmm. and a more entertaining and, and well-produced um, selection of videos. You, know, so you guys have done a great job. Thank you. I really appreciate it, Kevin. I really do. I mean, you know, it's rewarding to me because my whole purpose was to help grow the sport. That was it. Nothing else matter. Grow the sport of barbecue, grow the sport of SCA. And if I could tell you, this was really, you know, our first full year. I mean, June was our first full year. I can't believe it. So, and, and going into this year, you know, in January, we were only <clears throat> six months old. And um, it, I was really excited to see how the barbecue side was. We did very good that first year. Steak stuff was just getting started. And then all of a sudden, the barbecue stuff got shut down, but the SCA stuff kept going. And man alive, it's mm -hmm. just, we have helped so many teams just get mass amounts of, I can't even, I can't even keep up with the amount of teams that have had top 10 finishes. I, I told you the story about Mark Simmers, who, who took Matt Overson's class mm -hmm. in his fifth competition that he ever cooked. He set the SEA record for the highest point score ever scored, one tenth of a point from a perfect score. So, you know, and, 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 and for people who don't know, there's never been a perfect score yet. Yeah, right? yeah, never been a perfect score yet. So he got as close as anyone's ever got. Ever got. Okay, yeah, in his fifth competition, wow. and second time ever, and that was the second time that he had cooked Matt uh, cooked uh, the steak that Matt showed how to cook in his class. So. Wow. You know, it's it's been a blessing. It really has, and and we're hoping that that the barbecue stuff can really get going again. I, I don't know. I'm I'm very worried with barbecue. The trend seems to be down. I don't know what's going on. SEA stuff is zooming. It's going like gangbusters, and and I just I don't know. I hope that um, I I think it, I think it might come back, man. I I know a lot of guys and and gals, men and women out there on the competition circuit, who are ready, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, I think, you know, to put on a full fledged hundred percent go, you know, gangbusters barbecue competition is about the worst economic investment you yeah. could ever do. I mean, it's, yeah. it's hard to, to break even sometimes when right. you're doing payouts and, and paying for infrastructure and power and water and, right. all you know, that. all that kind of stuff. But, but I think some of the events that, um, you know, have really sort of stood the test of time. I'm thankful to see them sort of hanging through. Um, and, right. and the others, as I think as, as more revenue starts coming back into local cities and municipalities, they will start to feel more comfortable kind of getting rolling with them again. It's just going right. to take a little while. And I, I wonder right. if we might not start seeing smaller scale, maybe even some non-sanctioned stuff start to pop up, right. you know, and, or maybe just even some of the sanctioning bodies. I wonder if we'd ever see a KCBS event that involves just ribs and chicken. Yeah. You know, a yeah. one day ribs and chicken in and out, you yeah, know, you can and be done and be yeah. done. And, and, and I think that's, what's really, you know, kept the SCA going is that it doesn't eat your whole weekend, right? Um, or it's it quick. can, or it can if you want to hit multiple ones in a right. in a right. weekend, depending right. on when they might be scheduled or, or what have you. But it, that's really been, a, and 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 the entry fees don't you know knock yeah. you out of the park. Yeah, there's yeah. this very very good entry fees. Man. Well, I tell you what, man, I I really do I really do appreciate everything you're doing for the barbecue world. Why don't you give a shout out to some of your sponsors? Well, um, I do want to say real quick before I do that. Guys, if you're not following and listening to what John Lindsay and those guys over at Arcisipi are doing on their show that they have on a regular basis, you got to get on it. I mean, he's yeah. he's part of the Barbecue Champs Academy family, and they just do an amazing job. But I would like to say thank you for the opportunity to say thanks to you guys, first of all. Barbecue Champs Academy, I still remember the phone call I got from you, Mike, saying you'd like to maybe help me out as a sponsor for the Barbecue Beat podcast. And um, I, you know... 
I was like, okay, what's going on? Who are these? What this guy? Yeah. He's, he's got some big dreams, yeah. and and you've come through on them, man. And it's been such a pleasure to have um, you guys on board supporting what I do, and hopefully, you know, you know, this will be a relationship we can keep going on yeah, into the absolutely. into the future. Um, you know, cookingpellets.com. As far as pellets go, I have used Chris's products with cooking pellets forever. Uh, they never fail to give me the results i typically go with the competition blend or the 100 percent hickory but he's got if he says it's on the bag that's what's in the bag it's right. not a bunch of you know filler Fillers. stuff right. yeah right. yeah no oils to make flavors happen it's just and, and they're nice big 40 pound bags so right. um and you can get them from amazon ship right to your door that's always a treat uh you don't have to go haul them around and then last but not least you know Brad and all the good people over at, um, you know, Crisby cast iron seasonings folks. If you use cast iron, you gotta put Crisby products on your cast iron. It will rejuvenate. It'll save, it'll keep them cooking uh, just like you want them to. And, um, especially if you've, if you've elevated up to some of the nicer higher end, like fine X or Smithy cast iron, you know, that has a nice milled finish, but even, you know, your $12, $15 lodge cast iron pans, mm -hmm. this stuff is what you want to use. And they just, their new product that came out recently, believe it or not, Crispy cream. Oh, wow. I know, right? Stuff's amazing, but it just, they've got that. I like the swipe. It's like the saturated rag and this thing, you pull it out and just kind of, you know, warm it up a little bit. I, I kind of put it in the microwave in a little, a little bowl for like, 10 seconds right and it and it's saturated with the stuff you just wipe it in and out and you're mm -hmm. done yeah so wow. those are the sponsors for the show i thank you for giving me an, an opportunity to kind of show them some love i i couldn't do the show without without you right. guys and and the rest of them so thank you right right yeah we, we say the same thing you know people don't realize it's it's nothing cheap about <laughs> doing all this stuff, stuff that we do it's, it's time consuming and and man, I and I pump all mine back into advertising for the show, so that drives traffic to these guys. And you know, it we're all in this to network together, and that's what I'm trying to do. Is absolutely is to, to, to just drive. I want to see everybody succeed. I want that, all these it. guys to get just. You know, we got a lot of traffic to the website, and we want to push people out there and and get them to our partners and sponsors and stuff like that. So, yeah, and uh, if anyone ever has any questions. Uh, you know, there is the barbecue beat podcast community on Facebook. A shortcut to that would just be go to, go to my website, barbecuebeat.com. You can get right on there, um, through the top navigation bar, join us there, uh, show off some of the things you're cooking. If you've taken some of these awesome classes, the backyard classes with uh, barbecue champs Academy, let's, you know, we're getting into the holidays. I would love to see what you guys are, are bringing about on the, the smoker or the grill for your family. And it doesn't have to be, you know, meat, you know, I live right. in Florida and seafood is amazing. So oh, let's yeah. see what's going on there too. But, uh, but, but any questions I can ever answer for anybody, um, I, I hope those who have interacted with me so far will be able to tell you that I don't hold any secrets. If I'm doing something that works, I will share it with you and, right. and, and wish you all the best. So, right. Well, I appreciate it. Well, I see Mr. Bill Purvis. He's on here. He is another, uh, IBCA cooker, uh, you, uh, chicken fried barbecue, that guy right there, you better watch him. I think he finished number three in points. It was, uh, wow. Braden Lee Hickel, number two. And I think Bill nice. finished number three Him been cooking for a couple of years. And he's jumped out there with Lee and Fred Robles and all these guys okay. running around all over. He's one another one of these ones that's done put about 7,000 miles on his truck in the lap. Maybe more because I think he even went all the way from Texas up to Wyoming and cooked. Oh, man. So he's probably put over 10,000 miles on his truck. Okay. But that guy right there is tough. And, Bill, if you haven't had a chance to watch this whole show, you need to because – uh, Mr. Kevin here is a, uh, a master judge for KCBS. He's shared some great insight of some things that the judges are looking for. And I did that for my, my Texas brothers that I love so much that are jumping in KCBS to get you guys some information from a judge because this is it. So go back and watch the beginning of this. Your question, is this a doubleheader show? No, Bill. My daughter's birthday was on Sunday, and she uh, was proposed to by my future son-in-law, it looks like. So, uh, and we wasn't able to, uh, go out on her birthday on Sunday. We was out of town traveling back and, uh, we was originally going to go out to eat tomorrow, uh, or yesterday, excuse me, on Monday, but she couldn't do it. 
And uh, so we moved it to Tuesday. And I was like, oh, no, wait a minute. My show comes on at 7 o'clock. And we got a 6.30 dinner date. And so Kevin was gracious enough to move it up. So we, we just put it on at 4. Good thing is it'll still be here. And uh, I hope everybody's enjoyed this show. Kevin, from the bottom of my heart, man, thank you so much for what you're doing for the barbecue community, keeping us together. You shared some amazing stories with a lot of great cooks. And uh, to me, that's what barbecue is all about. I hope everybody will watch this show. I know we're on a couple hours early today, but you can still get a chance to watch it. And uh, Kevin, thank you for everything that you uh, that you have done. No, oh, thank you so much, Mike. Well, without further ado, I do want to thank once again all of our partners: Be Extreme uh, Barbecue, Papa Joe Grilling Supplies, B and B Charcoal, Lone Star. Thank you, Brian, for carrying all the product that you do. Craig Sherry, Pepper, Texas Pepper Jelly, Gunner Wilhelm Knives. Man, we got some. We got to. I got to put this video out that that I trimmed up on these briskets, and uh, show you just how sharp those knives are. They're absolutely amazing. Uh, Barbecue News Magazine. Don't forget to check out my buddy show, John Lindsay. Arkissippi Smoke Live on Monday night at 7.30. You absolutely have to watch his show. If you're not a subscriber, make sure you go follow them on Facebook, Arkissippi Smoke Live on Facebook. He comes on Monday at 7 o'clock Central. You do not want to miss that show. He had an outstanding show last night with Mark Lambert. Mark's putting on a big doubleheader this weekend with the whole hog contest, SCA, ancillaries, the whole nine yards. When Mark does something, he does it right. So, well, Kevin, once again, man, I appreciate everything. Uh, I am so glad to have you on our show. And it's an honor to me to have you here, brother. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Until next week, ladies and gentlemen, have a lot of fun and smoke 